Archaeologists searching for shipwrecks and artifacts in the depths of Lake Michigan ran into a surprising find when they discovered this boulder with what appears to be the carved image of a mastodon. Pictured here, the etchings are faded, but superimposed drawings reveal the trail of the carving followed. Such a carving would suggest the presence of prehistoric populations in the Lake Michigan area, when mastodons were still present in the Midwest, possibly during the last Ice Age. Even more mysteriously, it's been suggested that the rock is part of a Stonehenge-like formation and could be linked to unknown rituals of a people who inhabited the area long ago. Prehistoric Origin Northwestern Michigan College professor of underwater archaeology Mark Holley discovered the underwater site in 2007 at Grand Traverse Bay during a research expedition going 12 meters, about 40 feet, deep into the lake, searching for vestiges of ships. The set of stones is aligned in a mile-long line, believed at first to form a perfect circle. Some researchers think the formation could be over 10,000 years old. Normally, the remote sensing sonar techniques that led to this discovery are used to survey bodies of water for shipwrecks. The research team at Northwestern Michigan College has found boats, cars, and one sunken Civil War period pier in the lake, but never before had they found anything hinting at prehistoric human activity in the area. The stones that were found at the bottom of the lake show some unique characteristics. They all measure nearly the same distance across, which is not a common feature of natural rock formations. The site's even been compared to the Nub Playa calendar circle, the Caserjo alignments in France, and even Stonehenge in England. Comparing the available images of the site to other archaeological sites has made the similarities undeniable to some researchers. The most impressive element of the formation may be the boulder with the mastodon carving. It wasn't immediately located when the formation was discovered. It was actually noticed and brought to the attention of the research team by photographer Chris Doyle, who saw the engraving resembling a mastodon during a diving expedition to the site. The boulder featuring the alleged mastodon is about four feet high and five feet long. It has numerous fissures of natural origin, but the depth of the lines that make up the mastodon are deep enough to suggest human interference. They are precisely carved, according to researchers from the college, not just scratched. Furthermore, the researching archaeologists believe that the boulder is made of granite, which is hard rock, difficult to carve, leading to questions about which tools and techniques could have been used to create the carving. When shown images of the site, the president of the Underwater Preserve Council, Greg McMaster, commented that, quote, we couldn't believe what we were looking at. Yet some specialists are skeptical of whether the etching on the stone or petroglyph is indeed man-made. Many have asked for more evidence and to see the physical boulder. In the words of discoverer Mark Holley, quote, they want to actually see it. Experts in petroglyphs generally don't dive, so we're running into a little bit of a stumbling block there. Truthfully, presenting the formation would be too challenging for most archaeology and history experts. Furthermore, extracting the boulder from the lake would be both logistically complicated and would damage the archaeological site, if it indeed is one. The apparent possibility of the site being man-made could help inform historical records. Current theories hold that the boulder and site could be 10,000 years old or more. This prehistoric age has been established not only in considering the time frame in which the Mastodon, which went extinct in 8000 BC, and humans were present in the area, but also because it coincides with the time of the last Ice Age. The reason why the last Ice Age plays a role is that the lake itself was not a lake at that point in time. It was dry land. Therefore, an ancient civilization could conceivably have constructed the site, only for it to be inundated by climate change. A Monument in Context Despite the skepticism, it's thought that the site is still likely to be man-made, since evidence has been found of human presence on the continent dating back around 25,000 years. Indeed, the stone circles of Beaver Island and the stone carvings of the Sanilac Petroglyphs Historic State Park are both close by. When Europeans first began colonizing the area in the 17th century, they ran into hundreds of prehistoric mounds, possibly where dwellings were once located. Sacred Rock, a confirmed archaeological monument, is nearby at the shore of Lake Huron. What is surprising about the presence of the site is that if it is indeed man-made, it would mean that humans in that area of the continent had access to and development of tools more efficient and more impressive than previously believed for the time period. There could be significant implications for archaeology and anthropology. The great promise of the site in the depths of Lake Michigan is that it could be America's own version of Stonehenge, a claim that circulated in the media. Fake News Skeptics of the claims that have been made by researchers and media outlets in response to this discovery have taken issue with details that complicate the current established theories. First off, the fact that the site in Grand Traverse Bay, 
is more of a straight line of stones than a round construction such as Stonehenge has been enough for some to question the validity of calling it an archaeological site. The amount of work and advanced tools needed for such a construction have made the theory of human construction rather unrealistic, since Stonehenge, the site that it is constantly compared to, took an estimated 30 million hours to complete in three different phases. No confirmed prehistoric site in that part of the Americas has resembled such a construction. Yet. Another strong counter-argument that some experts have pushed to contradict the claims of the Lake Michigan site being man-made is that it's challenging to see the Mastodon carving on the boulder without digital enhancement. Disbelief that early North American residents could carve into a material as tough as granite circulates among scholars. Those skeptics believe that the fissures and lines on the boulder are faint and most likely natural. Herding Caribou if the underwater formation does indeed represent a prehistoric construction, Professor Holly has suggested a possible reason for its existence, herding caribou. Another researcher, Dr. John O'Shea at the University of Michigan, has been conducting work on a similar structure by Lake Huron, theorized to be a drive line built in prehistoric times to herd caribou. The idea is that hunters would arrange rocks in a specific pattern to send herds of caribou into an ideal area for ambushing them. Dr. Holly has suggested that perhaps the underwater Lake Michigan site served the same purpose. However, comparisons and assessments would be impossible for anyone outside of O'Shea's team, as the University of Michigan is keeping the location of the archaeological site a secret due to preservation and safety concerns. Mm -hmm. 